<laughs> yo, 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 y'all. Welcome to Breaking Tunes Podcast. With me today is the host of the Mike Lewis Podcast, man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Mike himself. Woo! What's it going on, audience? Thanks for, uh, <laughs> thanks for the invitation. I'm stoked to be here. I know, and I've been seeing you uh, putting in some work with this, so I'm um, glad to help you out. I know you've been a pretty loyal supporter of mine over my podcast, so it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, thanks for hopping on. Um, I was just like, who should I ask next? And I was like, huh, maybe he'll do it, maybe he won't, but it's not going to hurt to ask. <laughs> No, I never. I'm, I'm usually pretty, uh, I'm pretty open with, um, you know, because I, I remember how I was when I, I was starting in the early beginning stages. It could be, uh, could be a little bit of a daunting, uh, you know, task with uh, first starting out podcast because it takes a lot of, um, it, it takes a lot of out of you to kind of just like put yourself out there. I know that's just with life and social interactions in general, putting yourself out there is a hard thing to do. So I do commend anybody that does take part in uh, podcasting. Right. Yeah. So uh, we have a pretty good episode for everyone today. Um, I have some pretty good questions. And I told him before the show that if uh, he doesn't want to answer it, to say he pleads the fifth and I will boo him. <laughs> Uh-oh, got the effects and everything, people. I can't escape this one. So, uh, ho- hopefully they're not that crazy. They're not. But um, how was your day today? My day was not bad. Um, I woke up. I went to the gym. I came home. Um, I took my, uh, my one class that I had today, um, taking a couple of courses. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much the whole gist of it, man. I mean, with the, with this pandemic and everything, um, days are very shortened. I'll say that much. It's definitely an adjustment to what I'm used to. I mean, then again, I'm sure anybody listening to this can agree with me. Um, don't do too, a whole lot. Yeah. I mean, weeks pretty much consist of, you know, podcasting what I do and creating my content gym and then class so what about you it was good i just went to work and killed myself there and now i'm here <laughs> okay. what, what, what do you do i'm a supervisor for nutrition services at a college so it's uh oh cool it's a little crazy right now we're going through a big transition but i definitely do not want to talk about work when i'm not there so. <laughs> but um, before we started like when we were messaging i asked you a uh, to come up with two truths, one lie. Did you think of any? Yeah, I remember. I um, I remember <laughs> my two truths. Oh, actually, yeah, yep, I got them. Well, I'm ready. <laughs> Go for it. I'm a guess. I'm pretty good at this game, but we'll see. All right, so I'm just gonna start listing them off right now. So this is it's all on you from here to uh, figure out which ones are truth and which ones are lies. I can't help you, so. Um, I got this <laughs> number one out of the core three fast food, um, chains, Burger King is my favorite. Number two, I am not a fan of the summer and three, I'm an only child. Which ones are the truths and which one is the lie? I feel like you are an only child. The no, one, right? that, that's is that right. the life? No. That's, that's the life? Yeah. I actually I have, yeah. I have a younger I have a younger sister and uh, believe it or not, I mean, for those who pay close attention to my episodes, I am not a fan of the hot. Like I don't despise it, but like if you I'm not opposed to um, you know, the cold. Like I I really don't mind it. Um although lately, I mean we've been getting a shitload of snow. Um so that's kind of uh yeah. might uh, taint my uh, judgment a little bit but aside from that like um i'm like a pretty big uh cold fan and yeah as far as the three fast foods go i mean i know burger king i mean they just talked about it on the latest challenge episode but not not many people agree with me but for whatever reason um i i don't know something just feels right whenever i have bk so what are the three fast food chains burger king mcdonald's and what what's the third one 
Wendy's, at least where I'm from. At Wendy's. least that's what it's called. Okay. Yeah. I like Wendy's better than both of them. They have better patties. I'll give them that. Like the burgers are better at Wendy's, but I'd say McDonald's has the best fries. And if we're talking like the desserts, Burger King shakes, if you haven't had them, you, you, you got to hop on that because they're, they're good. I'll say that. Um, so for those of you listening, um, you have a podcast. Do you want to kind of explain what you do on your podcast for all that stuff, what your podcast is about? Sure. Yes. Yeah, so my podcast pretty much consists of, I like to use the word conversation more so than interview, because I feel like that's kind of like what it is. So my podcast deals with mainly uh, me chatting it up with um, current and prior cast members of MTV's The Challenge. I've also had on other actors from hit shows Drake and Josh and Zoe 101. And we pretty much just chatted up other time of the show and other topics. You know, I like to um, kind of get like the behind the scenes of like what maybe went on we didn't see and some perspectives maybe to reflect back on the show if they haven't done it in quite some time. Um, it, it's more or less meant to be like an experience. Like I want people to come out of it having laughed, having gained insight maybe gain knowledge and just a whirlwind of emotions is usually my goal is to have people coming out of it feeling some type of way. You know, if someone's coming out of my podcast feeling just like, eh, then then I'm failing at my job. So I try to, uh, yeah. you know, put, put my best foot forward and, um, you know, we're, we're doing pretty well so far. I mean, uh, after nine months or so, we're currently sitting at where we speak 2,027 subscribers. So, I mean, I'm, I'm proud of uh, the accomplishments and strides I've made. Um, and uh, hopefully that can uh, continue in the foreseeable future. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, what got you into podcasting? So I've told the story only once before, but I'll tell it again. <laughs> so this was probably close to a year ago. Um, for those that don't know, my birthday's March 7th, so you better remember it. Um, yeah, so this was almost a year ago, my birthday. I was um, going to New York to celebrate with a friend of mine named Rob, and you know, we were just out there, and then um, for my birthday, I got a, um, a cameo from the one cast member, Brad, um, and my friend makes music, and Brad's kind of like a DJ, so, like, uh, we would, like, jokingly kind of, like, tag Brad on, like, some of his uh, music posts on Instagram, and then Brad would, like, respond and whatnot, so I, we just kind of were joking about it, and then, like, you know, a big thing on youtube is like people do like social experiments and challenges and whatnot so like that was kind of like something like that like interested me i like i wanted to make content like i just wanted to put content out but like i didn't know exactly where i was gonna like get a start from and like basically i realized that like by me trying to do like social experiments and whatnot like that wasn't anything different but i was like well what else am i gonna do and then fast forward, like I kid you not, probably like pff, not even a week later, the pandemic gets announced and everything shut down. So like then from there, I was just for a month, like pretty much stumped. And then um, I just like pretty much was just sitting the one day, like late April. And I was just like, I kind of just want to start this just because I thought it was cool. Like I like. I didn't really have any set goals or expectations in mind to be completely honest with you. Like I'm in school right now studying television and media. So I figured like, Oh, I'll just do this, gain some experience and like maybe, you know, see where it goes. And then before I knew it fairly quickly, I mean, pe people started to take notice of what I was doing. Like, you know, certain clips would get uh, screen recorded from some of my uh, podcast episodes. And before I knew it, uh, pretty much, fun just like experiment turned into like well now shit like here I am like I have people that are like wanting to see more and like the more and more like you see results or improvements with anything 
the more and more addicting it gets and the more and more you want to just like fall in love with the process. And I think that's just the beautiful thing about everything in general is like you see growth like each day and then like you see it take off and that's just a beautiful thing. And I think like anybody in like, especially in like maybe your case, you're starting out. Like I feel like you get better and better each time and you shouldn't give up because like, it's ultimately like up to you to start that path. Like you control like what you want to do. So for me, I think like, I just wanted to um, pretty much just like push myself and see like how far I can really take this and um that's pretty much how the whole story started um and um yeah like i said before i'm pretty happy with like what we've been able to do thus far yeah nice yeah i've been following you for a while so it's been quite a right to see those numbers you you, you, you have up. any uh, favorite episodes um, now i gotta put you on the spot you uh come on you gotta do your homework here frankie <laughs> I know. I'm trying to think if I have a favorite episode. Um, honestly, they're all pretty. They're all pretty good. I don't think I have a favorite. I think I like Jody's oh, a yeah, lot. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, I, I was actually uh, pretty good. Yeah. One. That was a pretty good one, Jody for sure. And most recently, I don't know. Oh cool. god. I'll let you know after the show. That, 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 that's, uh, that's my homework for you. Uh, after the after we're off this, you you got to figure out which one you like best, and then I'm ex- I'm gonna expect you to uh, message me. I'll share it. I'll share it too. <laughs> um, do you currently have any podcasts that you listen to, or a favorite podcaster you listen to? To tell you the truth, like, and this even like pertains to me, like. I record the episodes and like I'm like currently like living in it like when I'm experiencing the conversation. Once I'm done recording and uploading and like promoting, I don't really do a whole lot of like re-listening or re-watching. Like there's no like podcasters in particular that I really like watch leading like I obviously like had like a um casual like knowledge or knowing of like maybe some, but like I never like was a consistent listener. Um, I just thought the concept was cool. Um, and like, obviously that's no disrespect to any other podcasters, especially ones that are in the same uh, kind of field as me, but like, yeah, I don't really like do a whole lot of, um, listening, like even of my own, to be quite honest. And, um, that's probably the one I should be listening to and figuring out what I could do to get better. But yeah. That's a that's the same with me. Like once I upload it, I I'm done. Like I won't won't go back well, to it. Well, yeah, because it. I feel like it's strenuous <laughs> on the mind. Like you you sit in like a chair for X amount of time, maybe an hour or so, and then like it's hard to kind of like go back and like have the energy to. Uh, it's kind of like once you're done, like your part of the job's done. Like and then whoever else wants to watch that, now it's up to them. Like you know. I just let my mom give me the feedback. Yeah, that's, that's the way to go, too. I do the same thing. <laughs> um, so do you have a favorite guest so far? Or are they all you're not going to say because you want them all to feel equal? <laughs> you know, true. Um, but if I'm going to be completely honest, um, I'll go. I'll, I'll name a couple. Um, in terms of, like, I mean, you mentioned Jody. Quality-wise, great episode. Like, that was it surprised me too because like i guess she had like a stigma on the show of like at least her last show that she did of being like non-entertaining i think we got to see like a different side of her um obviously i mean for those who follow me on uh twitter and whatnot they'll see uh dustin zito from the real world back to las vegas like him and i uh we've hung out before um we've actually done like an in-person pod as well like we're pretty close um Avery's another one who I'm close to, um, you know, uh, she, she's one of my favorite episodes. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah. I mean, in terms of like excitement, like, holy shit, I can't believe this is happening. Like normally I don't have like fanboy moments, but I can't even lie when I was in the process of like car maria and landon like just visually sitting there on the screen like knowing that you're about to hop on a call with them was just like this is like is this happening like this is mad like i grew up on 
Car Maria and Landon. Like my first right. like, full season was Fresh Meat too. Like just nuts, like crazy. Um, those are you know good ones as well. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I just want to give a shout out to everybody that's been on my show. Like anybody that takes the time to uh, do it with me, even if they're begrudgingly doing it, you know, I don't know for a fact if that's the case, but I'm just saying hypothetically. I give them like the utmost respect and um, appreciation and like I'll forever, um, you know, have their back if they needed anything. So that's pretty much how where I stand. But the ones I mentioned, they're ones that like stick out like a lot. Yeah. Um, you mentioned Landon. What I learned from actually your podcast with him is that he actually lives here in Denver. And I'm like, I have yeah, never seen him anywhere in my I, life. I, 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 I didn't know that you lived in, or I might have knew this, but now that you uh, mention it, I was the last two days talking with people. Um, I said, if I want to move or when I were to move um, to another state, Denver would be the top of my list. Like, honestly, and you might be able to vouch for this more than I can because I never like been there but like i heard that like summers are like low 45s and um it's very clean there that's all that's my oh, general yeah. really yeah you'll like, feel the difference like, you'll feel the difference of like air quality and like cleanliness and stuff but it's like it's getting pretty pricey yeah, you, now i'm not gonna lie <laughs> you, yeah i heard that too but you guys are up in the mountains right yeah, so the mountains from me, because I live downtown, so the mountains from me are, like, a 20 to 30-minute drive. Oh, all right. Yeah, so yeah, it's not, I mean, it's not school, horrible. My, my school's up in the mountains, so, like, early October, we're getting, like, so much wind, it's cold. Like, that's kind of, like, my – I don't like the wind, so to speak, but, like, I like a light breeze, at least a little bit of cold, as long as it's not windy. So I think Denver would be right in my alley, honestly, um, in terms of, like – other states like it was crazy when landon and i were doing that pod it was early september and he had a winter coat on in his car so that to me was just like wow because it was humid as hell by me that day so that's why i remember it so much yeah denver is like 300 days of sunshine so there's that or 300 days a yeah. year of sunshine so it's, <laughs> it's pretty great um so we covered uh joey landon and uh miss avery uh, i have a question not about her but question for you uh have you crushed on anyone have I you interviewed on uh i mean i wouldn't say crushed on anybody but like <laughs> um, <laughs> i mean obviously i mean it's it's a challenge like um the, there's gonna be uh pretty ladies um you know i've had a couple on that i'd say are uh you know fairly uh you know, pretty, I guess you could say. So, I mean, as far as, like, crushes go, no. Nah, but, like, I, I very distinctly be able to identify, like, okay, like, yeah, she, she's good looking, like this, yeah. So, but no, nah, nothing, like, too crazy, no. Um, do you have a dream guest that you haven't had on yet? Or, like, dream- who would your dream guest be? A? Is that a better question than that? Well, to, to tell you the Ooh. truth, most of my dream guests – have either agreed and like they just haven't happened yet or they've agreed and then just like uh, i don't know like yeah um laurel and Teresa, top of the list both agreed like if all goes according to plan they should be happening in the future um john a she's i don't know if you remember her she was from uh cancun um yeah she uh she's on the og season right now she agreed we were supposed to do that a couple months ago and then like um just kind of like fell through so i'd probably say like those are probably my top three um and uh yeah i mean i'm pretty optimistic in terms of like everybody honestly like when it's all said and although it's probably impossible to say i've had all of them like i want to just at the end of the day be like yeah, I had like this one on and then like see someone else on a screen be like, oh, well, I had them on. Like, I want that to be the situation. Like, I want, if I'm watching a show, every single one, like, I've had on. Like, that's my goal at the end of the day. Like, get as many people as possible and hear their stories because I feel like there could be background characters. Like, for instance, this Thursday, I'm going to be shooting a pod with uh, Rob. He was Marie's ex from Real World St. Thomas. Like, 
Rob was kind of someone who took like a background supporting cast character. I feel like him coming right. on my show, like I want to elevate him to where you're coming out of it. You feel like, oh well, shit, I wish we saw more of Rob. That's basically what I want to do. I want to make every cast member like have the spotlight on them and see them like in like their own yeah. like gray way. Nice. Um, yeah, I'm excited to hear from Rob too because I saw he was on a uh, Battle of the Seasons too, right? With yeah, Marie and, and, and Rival, Rivals too. He did or with the well. St. Thomas. Yeah. Oh, see, I even forgot he was on too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you kind of mentioned this earlier, but do you have any uh, more advice for anyone wanting to start a past or anything like that? Yeah, my first piece of advice for anybody looking to get started up in this little crazy world would be to, uh, you see your phone? Yeah, just uh, put that down because although social media is a very, I want to say, important piece of the puzzle and we're privileged to have these platforms, I think that it's also very dangerous in a way too because it's very easy to... um, you know, go on Twitter, for instance, and see what a hater has to say, and they get very discouraged by it, and, uh, you know, get kind of, like, knocked off your, uh, knocked off your path a little bit, but I feel like the most important part is to surround yourself with people who have your best interest in mind, and um, are of similar interest, because that's only going to elevate you and motivate you more to stay on the right path, and just kind of, like, walk a straight and narrow and do what you want to do. Um, and like I said earlier, it's ultimately up to you to start on that path. Like it's not going to do it for you. So it's important to just like have your mind set on it and then just go ahead and attack it. Like if you could look at yourself and say, I did better than I did the day before, then you've already won. Like that's just plain and simple what it is. You're only going to see improvement with each passing day. And that's the beautiful thing about life. And I use this analogy all the time, but like, if you want to play the piano, you want to cook. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you want to be a better babysitter. I don't know what it is, you know, but for those listening, you're only going to get, you're only going to get better um, with each passing day. So that, that's pretty much my uh, words to the wise for uh, those listening. Yeah, for sure. Um, luckily I don't have that kind of platform, so <laughs> mostly everyone who well, listens to me is kind of like, hey, but I, this no, is my no haters prediction. yet. <laughs> this is my bold prediction for you. You're, in a month's time, you're going to be at a uh, hundred subscribers. I'm going to take that. Rem- remember, Doubt it. Remember. I'm going to take it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> um so we're gonna do some basic just like getting to know you questions which are kind of had some ran down but you already answered so you're not you do have siblings younger sister yep right what you said yeah, yeah. <laughs> your birthday is march 7th, 7 4th 7 7 yeah oh, it's close <laughs> um where'd you grow up what uh city state um I'm from a little town called Seacocks, New Jersey. Um, we're pretty suburban, I'd say. I mean, I'm from uh, right, like, I'm like a bus ride away from uh, New York, like 10, 15 minutes. Like, we're right in the heart of the city. But I'm also, like, five minutes from where the Jets and Giants play. So I'm, like, dead smack in the middle of it all. So, <laughs> yeah. That that's pretty much uh, where I grew up. Yeah. You said Seahawks, New Jersey. Seahawks, but I'm a Seahawks fan. I don't know if you see the flag Seahawks. behind me. Yeah, I know. I was like, <laughs> I was like, is that why you're a Seahawks fan? I totally heard that wrong. <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite animal? My favorite. We're not talking animal? about the Seahawks. Just <laughs> <laughs> no, my favorite animal. That's a tough one. You know, you see, like, I'm gonna be completely transparent. I'd probably tell someone I'm an animal guy, but then like we're in a situation like this where I'm in a conversation of what's your favorite animal? And I'm probably like, oh, hold on, let me write this down. No, but um, <laughs> I, I've had, I've had uh, dogs. Um, well, I do have one dog still, but um, you see, I probably in terms of like, 
this is going to sound weird. I'm going to have to say pink. I don't know what it is. Like, they're just pink. <laughs> I, I, I like pink. Uh, I'm a pink guy. Um, I'm also a purple guy, but there's not that many animals that are purple. So I'll just say I'm a pig fan. I'll say that. Pigs are my favorite animal. That's funny because my next question is what's your favorite color? Oh, well, blue is my favorite color. Um, so I usually go with that for most things. But, like, if I'm going to a wedding and it's not mine, I'm wearing purple or pink as my uh, my uh, shirt of choice, my weapon of choice. We'll say that. I'll be, I'm going to be pissed when you show it to my wedding in purple. I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, if I catch a good fight, you'll, you'll see me there. and You won't be, you won't be able to miss me. I'm going to have a uh, nice little uh, bright purple on in the crowd. I'm going to be like, yeah, Frankie. Well, who knows? In the future, you might be you might be in Denver anyways in the future. So <laughs> Yeah, so it might make it a lot easier oh. for you to get me there. Do you have a favorite movie? <sighs> favorite movie? Um... Wow, that's a tough one because I watch a lot of movies in my life. Um, um, I mean, in terms of like what I'd say maybe like rang home true to me most, The Blind Side was probably the movie that got me into playing football because like I can't even lie when I was younger like I'm taking it back away it's like probably second third grade I, I I was complete 180 from what I'm really into now um I came in I almost came into school the first day of third grade with like a Jonas Brothers backpack um and then like a year later and then I'm like all into football and such and like <laughs> not and i don't listen to music ever again like it, it it was a complete 180 after i kind of saw that movie so i'd say like that's probably the movie that kind of like maybe influenced me the most but of course i've seen like funnier movies um right yeah oh do you have a favorite book what book you would recommend? Um, this is going to be probably the most cliche answer you're going to hear throughout this, but I'm probably going to say The Hunger Games because I'll be entirely honest with you. That's probably the one book in recent memory that unless I've had to read, like I've willingly read, because I'm just like, like I like reading articles and such, of like things I'm into, but like in terms of like reading a book, like right. I can't just be like, oh, I'm just going to read a book. Like, I don't know. I just, like, I tend to procrastinate and then I never get it done. So I'll say Hunger Games, but um, I'm very much so in terms of, like, whether it be writing or, like, reading, like, pen to paper or, like, reading. Sorry, my voice just cracked bad. Um, <laughs> I, I'm definitely I'm definitely more of a talker, listener than I am, uh, you know, writer, reader. I'll say that. Um, so do you have a favorite band or like, yeah, favorite band? You know, I'm glad you asked this because, uh, well, is it the Jonas Brothers? <laughs> Still no, much? no, it's not the Jonas Brothers. Maybe <laughs> if you would have asked me this, in 2009, <laughs> I'd have had a different answer. Um, no, um, I'm glad you asked this because I don't know if you're going to be familiar with this band, but for the last two weeks, I've been saying that like they're the most slept on band. They're a little, I wouldn't say old school, but they're like not modern. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll say early 2000s. Um, the Fray is a really good band. I don't know if you've ever heard them, but they're, yeah. they're really good. Like they're really slept on. Like they're, I, I like didn't really realize it until like, um, I was just like at the gym the one day and then like the song accidentally came on like on my uh, phone. And like while I was listening to my earbuds and I was like, this is pretty good. And then I looked down and I was like, oh, well, you know, I guess I'm listening to you guys now. So, and then I, since then, I mean, I've just been hooked on them, but um, I do listen to a lot of music and I do recommend that for anybody that, um, you know, needs to get through things. Like if you're say if you're working out, say if you're working and you're allowed to listen to music, I don't know. Um, maybe you're doing homework, like music, 
is very vital and helps. I, I love music. It's a big part yeah. of like what I do. Yeah, that's what um I always listen to music when I'm like getting ready for like a podcast. Oh, yeah. who, who, or like when I'm just like typing things and trying to think of things who, to say. Who who, uh, who, who is uh, it that gets Frankie uh going? Um I actually listen to a lot of Panic at the Disco. Who? Still, even to this day. Panic at the Disco. Oh they're they're good. I actually um Oh god, what's the name of it? I'm gonna forget. Oh, uh, what's the what's the song they came out with like at the end of 2018? The like the their most recent one. E, is it their most recent one? Like the one that like they really got them like on the map. Um, high hopes. Oh yeah, yeah. That one, yeah. That was I the hope. one that like really like these guys are for real. I like that song. Yeah. 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 Listen to them in a One Republic a lot. I do like they're, One Republic. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. Um, so, mountains or beach? Um, you know, people are going to hate me for this. And, uh, well, I'm going to have to go mountains. So, honestly, like, I'm going to have to go mountains. I like nature. You know, um, sand's cool, but uh, I don't like... It's like annoying when it's on you and you just can't get it off. Like, yeah, like, it's good to stay on the beach, but I don't want it on me when I'm leaving the beach. Like, stay there. Yeah, you know? sand, like, sand is so annoying. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not a sand guy at all. I'm definitely a water guy. Like, you know, I love hot tubs and such. Anyone listening, you know, feel free to invite me if you have one. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm not really much of a beach guy. I'd probably have to go mountains there. What about you? Yeah, you feel like go to the mountains and they have like hot springs and water too so yeah um, I, just, I just like the beach a lot but like you said sand sand is very annoying so yeah i would have to go mountains too yeah <laughs> it's a good question what has been your most embarrassing moment in life so far most embarrassing oh that's a tough one because mike gets embarrassed a lot um <laughs> <laughs> all right i'll tell the funny story because we're on here um i wouldn't this is definitely not my most embarrassing moment i mean it's more of like i mean i've told this before for anybody who's listened to my uh podcast with uh matthew underwood from zoe 101 i've told the story um i'll tell it on here too because i thought it was funny um so this was my freshman year of college I was going to, um, cause they had this system where, uh, you attend these events. They're not mandatory. Obviously they're, you attend these events and you get like these points added to like your, uh, like kind of like your student thing. I, I don't even know if like you're factored into anything, but like you get the top of like the student leaderboard for like school activity and whatnot. And it just looked good. Um, I was going there to get like, uh, points for it. And, um, Basically, the, the professor or whoever was teaching it, it was the, the main premise of it was college tips. So, like, she put on the big screen, um, like, basically, you know, bullet points in regards to college. And then she asked, like, oh, I'm going to ask you guys, when you think of college, what do you think of? Nobody, I mean, like, nobody's doing anything. Like, there wasn't a, like, there was probably less than 15 people in this mm-hmm. place and this big room. Keep in mind, a lot of empty seats. I'm looking around. Nobody's, like, saying anything. And I'm just like, what do I have to lose? So I raise my hand, and I go, well, uh, I honestly think it's Zoe 101. And then I'm looking around, kind of like, nobody's laughing. Nobody's even, like, they're kind of just, like, (laughs) straight grilling me. And then uh, the professor's like, you know, Zoe 101 was actually taught at uh, high school. And then I was just like... (laughs) Kind of just like, <laughs> like faded back. Um, <laughs> I could tell another story because it was <laughs> kind of funny. Um, this is pretty embarrassing too. Um, this is also my freshman year of college. Actually, the only time, first time I'm telling this kind of publicly. Just now that I think of it. Um, so like, I uh, I had a uh, girlfriend in the uh, beginning of. Um, college and uh we dated for like 
Pride Month and like split up. Like we're on like bad terms, but wasn't like we're we're just like whatever, you know. Um, and so uh, basically, there was like some Montclair. No, oh, that's the name of my school. Um, this dance that was coming up, and um, I was bringing a different girl, like to that I was like kind of seeing, like wasn't dating obviously, but like we were going there. And um, I show up there, and my ex is there with, like, her roommate, her other best friend, her brother. And I was just like, oh, my God, like, no. <laughs> and I wasn't making, like, any eye contact whatsoever. Like, maybe they won't see us. <laughs> so then, like, I was just, like, on the dance floor or whatever, um, uh, dancing with the girl that I went with. And then, like, I guess maybe she had saw me. And then, like, she comes up to me, and she's like, you're not going to say hi to me or whatever. And, like, the girl that I was kind of, like, brought there with me was just kind of like, who is this? And I was just like, <laughs> and it was barely embarrassing. I'll say that. Like, it, it was bad. She was probably like, you're cheating on me. <laughs> no, it wasn't even like that. It was it was but it was embarrassing bro. like it was really embarrassing all right uh let's get a, another question rolling here what is your biggest fear i'm not a spiders guy i'll be completely transparent i i hate i hate spiders <laughs> um yeah i i i'm not a spiders guy whatsoever um I wouldn't say I'm a phobia of heights, but I'm not really a heights guy, I'll be honest. Um, so, yeah, I'd probably see spiders and heights, though, yeah. Here's a, a juicy one. Do you believe in aliens? Hey, I haven't seen anything that would suggest that they don't exist, so I'll say, sure, why not? Because <laughs> I'll know that if the aliens are listening to this right now, they're not coming for me first. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe they will Just hey, I mean, I'm ready <laughs> um, your favorite dessert uh, yeah I gotta go ice cream I was trying to dance around it but no ice, ice cream <laughs> got but uh, cookies and brownies are cool I'd probably say cookies over brownies though but um, definitely ice cream's gotta be at the top of the list yeah that's funny that you're like cookies over brownies because when we're like messaging you're like uh you have a sweet tooth or something like that and i actually have a game uh-oh here we go <laughs> well we said like cookies over brownies so it's just i'm gonna just name two desserts and you tell me which one you would pick over the other uh sweet it, this is like basically the same thing but it's in a different form so a cake or a cupcake i'll go cake bigger <laughs> I was gonna say that. <laughs> Cheesecake or donuts? Donuts. Wow, that's the wrong answer. <laughs> um, chocolate or caramel? Chocolate. Ice cream or froyo? Here we go. After this one, ice cream. Um, pie or creme brulee? Uh, I'll go pie. A funnel cake or brownies? A good funnel cake is a good funnel cake. <laughs> but a good brownie. Uh, go with the good brownie. Yeah. Really? I feel like brownies are like so hit and miss like whenever you buy them. They are hit or miss and because I'm, they're either too dry or, like, they hit just right. There's no in-between. Yeah. Um, I have to get some uh, hash brownies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> um, if I asked your friends to describe you, how would they describe you? Definitely very witty. Um funny they'll probably tell you like i'm usually the guy to lighten the mood um i like to think that they would call me very driven um i definitely if i have my mind set on something I'm, <laughs> I'm sure as hell getting it done um and um 
they'd probably say that I'm I'm kind hearted. I mean very well. Um, I definitely uh, care about those. Like if I know that like someone's like really for me, like I'm gonna do everything that I can to uh, make sure that they're happy. Um, I definitely put others before myself a lot maybe a little too much to a fault sometimes but that's just how i'm programmed i guess <laughs> a lot of good things they want to say anything crazy just kidding, <laughs> oh my God. Just kidding. um so i'm gonna move to my last set of questions which is uh my favorite part of the podcast because they're just meaningless stupid questions that have nothing to do with anything so are you ready <laughs> Yeah, let's go. <laughs> All right, the zombie apocalypse happens right after this podcast. How long are you surviving for? Huh, that's a good question. Probably like a week. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. They're going to pick me that's off. That's a good right? answer. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I always feel like I'm going to uh, get killed right away or last pretty long. <laughs> hey, I don't know. I don't I'm no to do the math week. in my head. I just feel like I would get, I don't know, picked off after like a week. I, don't know. I mean, I think I can defend myself pretty well, but, you know, sometimes those zombies, they got like uh, fleshy and uh, kind of like instincts. I don't know how to mess with them, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually reading a book called The, the Zombie Apocalypse Survival Book or whatever. You um, might want to start reading book. a little more. You might be in trouble once this is up. I know, I'm only like two chapters in. I hate reading. <laughs> yeah, <tell me. laughs> if someone gave you a pet giraffe as a birthday gift, what would you do with it? Probably take care of it, you know. Maybe it's not the circumstances I would have uh, planned or hoped for, but uh, it's the cards I'm dealt with, right? So looks like I got a lot of explaining to do to uh, my family at uh, the next gathering when they see a uh, long neck uh, sticking out. It's like bringing the giraffe in. <laughs> yeah, Madagascar. <laughs> What's um, the cheesiest joke you know? Can you think of one off the top of your head? Cheesiest joke, you know. Uh, this is actually, or we could go cheesiest pickup line. Those are good too. Ooh. You know, I've used some pretty cheesy pickup lines in the past, but I've never like they never seem to uh, fail me. It's weird. Um, I'm not really a pickup line guy. I mostly do it like, yeah, Jokingly. Like, ironically. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with jokes. So if someone says something like, for instance, and like, I'll say this, like if I'm in a group setting, if someone goes like, oh, well, I had chilies the other day. They're so good. And I'll be like, well, if you're saying it, it must be true. That's probably the most cheesiest thing I have ever said. Cause 10 tends to be kind of like less awe inspiring. Um, after I say it, um, than when I expected, like I, tend to think more people would find it funny and it seems to just fall flat every time. So I'd probably say that. Yeah. <laughs> Pineapple. Does it belong on pizza? No, not at all. Anybody who uh, puts it on pizza, I mean, you, you seriously just need to, you need to figure it out. All right. You're probably suffering from what I like to call uh, psychopath uh, syndrome. Um, you might want to go get that checked out and, um, yeah. <laughs> if you had to replace pineapple with a different fruit to put on pizza, what would it be? Ooh, I'm not sure I put anything <laughs> on it, honestly. I feel like you don't fix what isn't broke, you know? Um, I feel like pizza is a very uh, beautiful thing, and I feel like you don't want to mess with it. So, uh, But if I had to say one, Jesus Christ, then I guess I'd probably keep pineapple on it. <laughs> Because, I mean, what's the alternative option? I mean, at least one of them's been proven to have uh, been on it before, you know. And I can't really imagine myself putting it. I like bananas, but I can't imagine putting a banana on a pizza. Then again, I might go try it once we're done recording this just to uh, say that I did it. Put, it on, put me on, like, Fear Factor or something or, like, World Star. 
That's not how that goes. <laughs> yeah. Speaking, speaking of your factor, would you go on a reality show? On a reality show? If you have the um, opportunity? Yeah. You and know, which one? It's definitely something that I'd have to uh, talk about and consider. I'd definitely be flattered um, if I had to go on any. It would probably be the challenge because I feel like I, it's what caters to my uh, my strengths. I mean, I've played football most of my life. I mean, you know, assuming this virus, you know, stops, I'll most likely be playing it again come the fall. So, um, you know, and I train like year round. Um, so I'd be very well suited for it. Um, even the mental part too. Um, like, I'm 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 a, I'm a pretty book smart guy. I mean, it might not look like it right now, but I, I then again, um, so I'm pretty I'm pretty smart too. So I mean, I think that I would bring a lot to uh, the table, especially considering I cover the show. So I kind of know like what's going on, um, and I might have a different uh, outlook on it. But I definitely say if I were to go on one, that'd be the show. You know, if I got contacted for a dating show, I'd definitely think it'd be a little bit of an overwhelming thing you know i might start to sweat a little bit but then i'd have to make a decision um but i i'd kick around the i'd be very open to it i'll say that um there's really nothing stopping me from it if i were to get the opportunity um but i'd obviously have to take into account some uh some uh, life circumstances and see if the pieces would uh fit the puzzle your first like challenge is gonna be you like fifty stories up, trapped in a box with spiders. <laughs> hey, I mean, I got like your two biggest fears in one. <laughs> uh, I would be famous. If have you ever auditioned case. for? Have you ever auditioned but, for a show? No, um, I've I've never been uh, like old enough to. You know, like now they just pull from like yeah. how many Instagram followers you have or. Uh, how many, um, you know, what shows you've been on already? I've, uh, I was like probably nine or ten when uh, Fresh Meat Two was the last time that they've just like pulled random people. That was I was probably like nine or ten when yeah. that season was airing. So regular um, people. Yeah, so I was never old enough to. What I have probably, I mean, what I've gotten on, obviously, no, I don't know, maybe that that that's that's something i'll never know but well to get me to sleep well yeah. at night i'll say that i would have got picked yeah yeah i um i auditioned for the real world um really i actually made it pretty far and then uh it was the most recent facebook season one though oh shit. and then after like that the atlanta one yeah i made it to like stage three or whatever and then they didn't like me for whatever reason Dude, that's incredible and, um, but then after like seeing like the reviews and like no one from that show even went to like do the challenge or anything else, I was like, yeah, oh, that, that it was a good thing I wasn't like, on that. That show's pretty much swept under the rug. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, I didn't watch it. Did you watch it? No, I I really didn't. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like, I don't even know anyone who was on there. So it was probably a good thing I didn't get picked for that one. Yeah, no, man, you got spared the. Uh misery yeah um so you're a sports guy right yep football guy um if players had to get drunk and play a certain sport which sport would be the most funny to watch oh <laughs> uh, i mean they'd all be <laughs> funny in their own right i mean baseball would be kind of sad to watch you know what i think would be funny why not? Does kickball apply? What, 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 what about kickball? Yeah. Yeah, let, let's just say kickball, right? I mean, I was tempted on kicking around the idea of saying golf, but uh, I don't know how golf would be. I don't, I don't think golf's fun at all. Um, <laughs> but we'll say kickball because, you know, you got to kick. I don't think anybody would be able to connect with the ball, but if they do, it'd be funny to see them running base to base, like kind of like a sloppy mess, you know? But I think all of them would be funny. I mean, shit, we might have to petition to get a uh, drunk uh, sports league put together once this is up. There's a lot of things to do once this podcast is over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, thought, 
I have a couple more questions and then we are done so all right you go to a store and you have to buy three things to make the cashier feel uncomfortable what three things are you buying onions a condom and a water gun yeah Pretty much. <laughs> water gun. I was just I was thinking like, the most random three. Com- uh, not, not for any particular use. Just I was thinking of the three most random things you could possibly buy at the same time. So I'm the cashier. I'm just like, oh, they need the onion for dinner. They need the condoms to get down. And they need the water gun for their kids. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Boom. I already have your whole story set up. <laughs> All right. What piece of advice would you give your younger self? Um, definitely to not try to appease to the uh, the kind of cool crowd because, I mean, my younger self, I often, you know, I'll call a spade a spade. I would often kind of try to be funny or try to act cool to kind of like fit in but I feel like that's all high school used to be um it's all uh, it's a very scary and daunting thing being a young uh kid or young adult teenager growing up there in school because it's all like um you know you're seeing these people constantly for uh you know months on end five days a week like you gotta fit in and adapt with these people you know I think I would tell my younger self to uh stay true to myself and not try to be someone that I'm not. Um, and I definitely think that I've come a long way and I've learned from, uh, learned from my younger self. Yeah. I would take that advice too. <laughs> Shit. Oh. Finally, my last question. What is your go-to dance move? My go-to dance move. Well, I'll be completely honest, and you're probably going to see a video of this come July, Frankie. Like, I'm probably going to forward it to you because I got a wedding to go to, and this is like the signature thing. Um, you know, probably the rope pull, like when you're like, you're pulling yourself close or something. I pro- that's what I start with. Um, you know, I, I get down with the doggy a little bit. Um, the doggy? Yeah. I mean, I'm mixing a floss here and there. You know, you got to stay clean. Um, and, uh, I've had some pretty unsuccessful attempts at the worm, but we'll get there. Rope the one. I, I don't think I've done that one. That's kind of of something you either do to be funny or do to kind of like turn on a girl, but I don't know what girl would be turned on that. I'd probably be freaked out. (laughs) (laughs) I just do like the grocery cart one. Yeah, I mean, (laughs) (laughs) Um, anything else you want to add before we no enter off the two? I just want to say thank you again for uh, the thank you again for the invitation. I'm always uh, you know stoked. Thanks for coming. Yeah, I'm always stoked to do stuff like this. Obviously, uh, feel free to reach out whenever, um, especially for advice or anything else. And, um, you know, your support doesn't go unnoticed as well as the support of anybody else potentially watching this. Um, and uh, if you guys want to reach me, you can follow me on Twitter at MikeLew52. And my Instagram is MikeLewisOfficial. But make sure to subscribe to my YouTube, which is obviously Mike Lewis podcast and everybody give Frankie some love too, because he put this name together and uh, he's going to take off with this. I know it. Just remember in a month, you're going to be at a hundred subscribers, maybe even less than a month. We'll see, but that's my bold prediction by a month's time. We'll see. Um, if I'm not there, then you owe me a gift card to uh, Burger King. <laughs> 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 I'll remember. Yeah. All right. Well, well, thanks for hopping on, guys. I will uh, throw up his usernames in the description. And yeah, thanks. It was fun. Getting to know a lot. Got to know a lot about you. Um, but for sure, we'll keep in touch. For sure. For sure, man. Well, the real Mike Lewis, please stand up. That's what I got to say. <laughs> thanks.